Hey, One Life Church, welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you have joined us in watching our virtual town hall. And uh, I'm here joined with my good friend and co-pastor Justin Wallace. Yes, sir. And I'm Daniel Hodges. I'm one of the co-pastors here. So today we're going to go through a handful of really amazing slides. Yes. And that will really help show the picture of where our church has been yes. over the past, you know, about a year, maybe even a little bit longer. Yeah. 18 months, something like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So... The town hall is to give a landscape. Yeah, like, there you go. Like a picture of where we've been over the past 15 months since the pandemic began. Because sometimes it's hard to see everything. So right. maybe you join us online only and you don't see the people that join us in person. And yeah. maybe you join us in person, but you don't see the people that join us online. And <laughs> maybe you came to the communion drive through, but you didn't come to the ice cream drive through. <laughs> yeah, and I missed a couple of those things because we had twins. Yes. So I don't even know all the people that. So come. there's all this happening, and in the last year and a half, it's been hard to see the landscape. Yeah. And so today, our goal is to really show you a landscape and to remind you that God never stopped working mm -hmm. and the church never closed. Mm -hmm. We just shifted our imagination. Yeah, We shifted the way that we do things. And yep. so we, we want to give you some analytics. This is going to be stock full of analytics. <laughs> some of you are going to completely geek out. But for the rest of you, don't check out because what these analytics communicate is the work of God in and through our mm, church. And that's so great. that's what we're going to jump into. And uh, so, yeah, so here's the thing. If you have questions, jot those questions down. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave them in the comments, or you can always email us at info at mm -hmm. onelifechurch.tv. And we love your questions. So please, please, please don't stuff those questions down. Reach out to us and we would love to com continue this conversation as we look at um, all of these analytics. Yeah. So, yeah. you ready to jump in? Let's do it. All right, let's jump in. <laughs> the first analytic today that we're going to look at is our church outdoors engagement. I don't think either of us had ever done church <laughs> no. outdoors. No. And, and it was an idea that we, we probably stole or borrowed off of some other church yeah. that was doing it. <laughs> but come August, we said, it's time for us to come back together mm -hmm. and to see one another. And it was a sweet time. Yeah. To worship outside, to hear you and the other worship leaders sing <laughs> with the, the birds, and for our neighbors oh, that was to hear us sing, and the wind to blow through, and to imagine that the Holy Spirit works like a wind. <laughs> I mean, it was really amazing. Our Kids Life team added so much yeah. with Kids Life moments and Kids Life packets. And so on this slide, what you'll see are the attendance numbers for Church Outdoors last fall, and yeah. our Average number from August until November was about 81 people per Sunday. Yeah. And so we knew that it was going to take us time after from March to August. We didn't meet in person. We were all online. And it did. It took us some time to, to grow and for some of us to come back. Um, but yeah. it was really fun to worship together outdoors. Yeah, the, the church outdoors thing gave us an opportunity to gather, but gather safely yes. in a season where we weren't totally sure what the right safety precautions were. Yes. Right? Yeah. So that was what was really great about that. We yeah. had pop-up tents out in the, dry, in the, in the parking, parking lot. lot. Yeah. We had, I mean, people still wearing masks. Our host ministry stepped up big time. Big time. Right? Because Huge. they had to be everywhere yes. helping everybody. I mean, we had people getting tents to your, yeah. to your car. Yeah. I mean, all kinds of crazy, amazing yeah. things were happening. And you're the one, I think, that said it kind of melded together to to two sides of the pandemic conversation, yeah. right? Yeah, we were trying to create common ground. Yes, create right? common ground. Yeah, and and this this last year and a half has polarized a lot of us. Right. We've we've gone to extreme sides, and as a church, we wanted to create some common ground. and And Church Outdoors, I think, did a yeah. wonderful job at that. Yeah. The the next slide is. Um, what you'll see is church in person engagement. Mm -hmm. And so starting in December, we started coming back in person indoors. We did and, three around Christmas time. That's right? right. Yep. And then we celebrated Christmas together. Yeah. Which was amazing. Yep. And then we took about a month off because the numbers were really high in our area. Right. <clears throat> and then we came back together at the end of January 
and we've been in person indoors since January. And so you'll see on these on this slide that you're looking at, and the average number of people that have attended our church in person um, services since January is 83. And I'll tell you, that's incredible. That's incredible, and it's taken a lot of courage for so many people to come back Mm -hmm. and join us in person indoors. And so I think that's an amazing slide, and it shows um, shows that God has continued to move, and we've continued to gather as a church and worship together. The next Mm -hmm. slide is one of my favorites, and it is an age breakdown of everyone that has come (laughs) in person indoors. Because we've been doing reservations, and so this slide shows you a breakdown. So you'll see the under five crowd, the five to seven crowd on the slide. It says five hundred and seven. We don't have any five hundred seven. Oh no, that's my. I made that mistake. That's all right. We, that. we don't have any five hundred seven year olds. Five two seven year olds. Yes. So one of the things I want to point out on this is the wide span of generations. Yeah. But also how many young people. Oh, yeah, that's cool to look at. I mean, you know, you know this about the church, that often in the church, it's the older generations that stay engaged in the church, mm. and we say the younger generations are leaving the church. Yeah. Not at One Life. Yeah, that's so awesome. So many people <laughs> under 40 are coming to our church and engaging their faith and yep. learning to follow Jesus, and so that is a very, very hopeful um, analytic. Now, the next set of slides are our church online engagements. Um, and we have been offering church online. Yeah. I want to give a big shout out to you and your team, your production mm. team that worked so hard before the pandemic to get us online and God's yeah. sovereignty and his provision for that. Yeah. We didn't know a pandemic was coming. Yeah, we didn't. You didn't have that plan for 2020? <laughs> no. And, uh, and so when we hit March, our team, the, especially the production team, yeah. was able to to just keep cruising. Yeah. And we've gotten better along the way. Yes. And we've made some changes along the way. Yes. We've learned some stuff. We've yeah. made improvements, but we were ready to roll in mm-hmm. March. And so we wanted to show you the church online engagement because this wasn't, this was out of necessity, but now this is a ministry of our church. Yeah. We have yeah. several families that join us online. And so if you come here in person, you don't see these people. Right. But these people are a part of our church. Yeah. They are a part of One Life Church. This is their church home. And so the average views in the first 44 hours of each service is 44. So that's the average number of devices viewing a service in the first 24 hours is 44. Now, nationwide, churches are using this metric to determine the attendance online. And Mm. it's anywhere from 1.75 to 3.5. So they'll take the number of views, multiply it by some One number. Of those, some yep. of those numbers. Yep. Yeah. And that's the attendance. We've been using about two and a half, but if you take the, the span, it shows that we have an, an online attendance between 77 and 154. Yeah, whoa. An example of this is your family. You have five. <laughs> seven. Seven in your family <laughs> you now. You count the twins. You have twins now. <laughs> and if you're watching it together as a family, that's one device, that's one view. Yep. But there's seven people attending. Yes. We have a family in Knoxville, Tennessee that that moved Mm -hmm. to Knoxville during the pandemic. They continue to be a part of our church. And now they kind of have a house church. Right. Where there's like 12 of them meeting together with us on Sundays. (laughs) One device... 12 people. Yeah. So yeah. we just want to get a, an idea of how many people. And you have the, peop- the people who are, who are at the house by themselves, too. Yes. So that's why you've got the range. The range. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, the average um, amount of time that each person watches our service is about 17 and a half minutes. Mm. The national average is between 18 and 22 minutes. So we're so right we're not, there. Yeah. We're not far off. Yeah. And you, you might have noticed if you join us online that we shortened our service times. Yeah, we did. The reason for that is because the average watch time is 17 and a half minutes, okay. not yeah. an hour and 15 minutes. And so <laughs> we have shortened things up so yeah. that people can stay engaged yeah. and people can continue this to worship This is a good opportunity um, to talk about kind of hybrid ministry. Yes, talk about well. that. Yeah. Because, you do, because you have these numbers of people that are you, sometimes you don't see, before the pandemic and before Church Online was where you see it now, you would just minister to the people that were in the room, in that the would room. show up 
on the campus, you yes. know, that were within a 10, 5 mile radius of the church. Yes. But now we have something different, yes. and that's what churches around the nation are calling hybrid ministry yes. because you have places where you can minister to people and engage people with, with Jesus yes. much more than your reach used to be. Yes. And yes. so that's what's, what's amazing but became, becomes a little tricky for us as we say, what's next? What's on the horizon? Yes. You know, how can we continue to resource the in-person gathering, but also how can we resource the online gathering? That's right. And how we engage people even yes. during the week, not on the weekends. And we continue to dream. Yeah. yeah. How do we engage people? How do we meet people where they are? Whether it's through social media, yeah. whether it's through church online, whether it's through church in person, mm -hmm. or if it is, I mean, a multitude of things. Some ideas we don't even have yet. <laughs> yeah. But that's the idea of hybrid ministry. We don't have just one aspect of our church's ministry. Yeah. There's ministry happening all over the place. And I believe that's a good move for the church. Yeah. And it extends our influence into places we would have never reached before. Mm -hmm. uh, the next slide is our YouTube subscribers. You'll see that January 1st of 2020, before the pandemic, we had 79 subscribers. Okay, yeah. Then on uh, December the 31st of 2020, after so a the... a year later. A year later, we had 155 subscribers. And as of today, we have 171, 172. I just saw a new subscription came through. And yeah, so, yeah. And so, uh, so if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you're yeah. watching this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that little bell because it gives you an opportunity to see content when we drop it. When yeah. we download that content, then you see it's happening and you can watch it, stay engaged, stay connected, mm -hmm. and also share that on your social media platforms. Share that with your family. Share that with your friends that you are investing in. So those are some good analytics, some good um, analytics about attendance. The next slide is about first-time visitors. This is incredible. The number of first-time visitors that we added into our database was 27 oh, during wow. a global pandemic. Oh, starting from March yes. 2020, which is when the pandemic yes. began. And we and shut so down. New people continue to come yep. and visit our church. We new have new people, people at church outdoors. Yes. New people at uh, church online. Yes. And new people at church in person. There it is. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. Yes. And you may not see that. You may not see the new person that's coming online. You may come in person. You may not see the person that's coming in person. Yeah. There, One Life Church has shifted. It, mm -hmm. it is different than it was 15 months mm -hmm. ago. And that has been God's leading. Yeah. God has been leading us. The next slide is about baptisms. This is so cool. In 2019, we baptized one person. In 2020, in the middle of a pandemic, we baptized three. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, a daughter and a mom were baptized during church outdoors. Yep. And then the third is a son that the family, mom and dad, baptized at home in the in their own ba bathtub. <laughs> so, Sweet. Yes. Perfect. And so that's amazing. That's ministry happening yeah. all over the place. All right. All right, so let's see. What is next? The church analytics um, engagement in church-sponsored events. We did. We hosted all different kinds of events over the past year. Yeah. Communion, drive throughs ice cream, Axiom groups. You led a book club. That's right. Yep. Um, all kinds of things, and people were Trick engaged. Trick or treat was a big one. That was my favorite of yeah. 2020. <laughs> it was so cool. I loved it because there were 81 people, a part of our church, that came to that. But there were 60 people that weren't a part of our church that came, and we were able to bless them Amazing. and yeah, be the hands and feet of yeah. God in their life. And so that was really cool. But all of this, this these, these events were to show that the church has been moving. Yeah. A lot of times we think of this past year and we think, well, we haven't been meeting in person, so what have you been doing? A lot. <laughs> yeah. God has been working. Yeah, and it's not just us that did these things. No. There were volunteers that came, wore masks, did yes. things safely to make these events happen, to Incredible. reach out. Our volunteers have been amazing. Yes. The number of times we've asked them to pivot oh, and man. shift. Yeah. We got a little dizzy sometimes. Yeah. But our volunteer teams are yeah. incredible, and our ministry team leaders have made it happen. All right, now what's next? What's next is um, we're going to look at our financial report and just give okay. you a quick financial report. Uh, the first slide that you're going to see is the number of financial partners that we, have, we had um, in 2019 to 2020 and the number of financial partners that we have now in 2020 to 2021. We're looking at new donors and then total number of donors and continued donors, okay. all right? So in 2019 to 2020, April of 2019 to March 
of 2020, we had 129 families give partner financially with our church. At least a dollar or more somewhere. At, yes, in, in some way, in yeah. some way. And uh, 56 of those were brand new, and 73 of those continued from 2018. Awesome. We had a, we had a fantastic year. Now, you might think going into a pandemic, things would have just fallen off the table. Yeah. But let me show you. We had 98 families give in, 20, uh, in 2020 to 2021. 15 new families started partnering, but this number is so cool. 83 families continued from 2019, 2020 to 2020, 2021. Wow. That's yeah. 85% of our financial partners in 2019 to 2020 continued into the next year. Well, wow. our friend Crystal Allen look, works with a lot of numbers and a lot of donors for another nonprofit here in the Charlotte area. And when she saw that number, she said, "That's worth celebrating." Yeah, because usually that number cool. is below sixty percent. And so what that means is that people, you believe in this place, and we believe in this place. Yeah, and God has provided through yeah. us for what He's doing here at One Life. All right, the next slide is a budget income and expenses. We're going to show you um, what our budget ha average has been over the last three months, six months, 12 months, what our income has been, and what our expenses has been. I just want to show you this. Our budget over three months was 25000 Our income is 30, was $30,356. Our expense average over the past three months, $28,376 that leave, left us with a balance on average monthly of $1,979. Positive, positive 19. Positive, yes. Yeah. I'm not going to go through the six-month average or the 12-month average. These slides are in the chat or the description of the YouTube videos okay, good. for you to look at and, and comb over these numbers. What this yep. shows is that our budget has remained steady mm -hmm. and our income has remained steady. Yeah. And our expenses have continued to come under yeah. what we bring in. And so that is really great. The next slide is our income breakdown. Okay. Because we bring in money from other places, not, it's just not offering. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we have the collective. Mm -hmm. We started the nonprofit co-work space. We have collective partners, and they pay rent to use those offices. We have miscellaneous income. We have offerings. We have the rooted campaign income. And so you can see on this slide, the three-month average miscellaneous $885 rooted has started to drop because we finished the rooted campaign, Okay, $2,665. Right. The collective income, $4,283, and the offering, $22,521. All right, so, so that's the three-month average of income. What I want to show you is our goal eventually as a church is that that our offering would meet our budget. Uh, yes. Yeah. And so then... So our budget right now is 25000 for the three-month one. That's right. Okay. And we want our offering, which is about 22000 to meet, to meet. Or, or go over that $25,000. And so there is room for you to partner financially with this place. Yeah. There is room for you to step in and fill that gap. And so once again, all of these slides are in the description. I encourage you to look through them and look through every single month and comb over those for yourself. The next slide is about Rooted Continued. Yep. We started the Rooted campaign three years ago. Huh. Yeah. And we bought this property. Yes. Which is a big celebration for you being here 16 years. And we've never owned anything. We've been portable the entire time. Yes. You know, every year we're like, do we re renew the lease? Can we get another trailer to pull more things? <laughs> yes. And so then we finally set down roots. Yeah. And, yep. and we call 1030 Central Drive our home. And that rooted campaign ended this yep. spring in 2021. But we want to continue with the vision of rooted. Yeah. And the vision of rooted was to continue to establish a permanent, permanent presence, presence here in Concord that leads to eternal influence. Yeah. We want to continue on that. We believe that God is continuing to call us to set down roots here in Concord. Mm -hmm. And so in April and May, we're doing a campaign where we're raising $25,000 to do some more renovations around the church, um, to put some outdoor uh, children's spaces yeah. 
and for our kids to play between services. Um, we're doing a camp with Amazing Grace Advocacy and Gwen Bartley, and we want them to have some space outside for their kids to play um, during their yeah. camps. We're going to do an outreach with Endless Opportunities and LaShonda Houston. We're going to do some neighborhood outreaches with ice cream trucks. Um, we want to replace the front doors in the lobby to make it more welcoming and open. Mm -hmm. And so we're raising $25,000 for Rooted Campaign Continued so that we can continue to establish a permanent presence right here that will lead to eternal influence. So we, we've raised 48% of that goal, yep. which is amazing. And we want to invite you to be a part of that, that maybe you got your stimulus check. Did you get your stimulus check? You better believe it. And you're like, I need somewhere to put this. This would be a great place. Yeah. Maybe you got your taxes. Now and you're that looking, I'm waiting on. You're still waiting on that. <laughs> and you, you want to tithe off of your taxes. This could be a great place for you to give that special gift. Yeah. Or maybe you're just praying and God leads you to give to the Rooted Campaign. This yep. is a great place to invest what God has blessed you with for eternal influence. Mm -hmm. And so we want to invite you to do that. You can do that at onelifehub.com or at onelifechurch.tv slash rooted. Yep. and learn more about the Rooted Campaign and all the things that God has done around here. All right, tell me a story Yeah. about these analytics are numbers. Yeah, yeah. Put it in a story form for me. How have you seen God work in this past year? Yeah, I'll, let me tell two quick stories, okay? okay? One is a book club. We, I, I ran a book club. The pandemic was at the beginning. We were like, we just need some way that we could gather and maybe go through something that would help encourage us. We picked a book, and I invited a few people. And a friend of ours, Lori Jackson, just recently told us um, that that book club was pivotal, has been extremely transformative in her life. Yeah. Now, I didn't know that was going to happen. Yeah. I was just thinking, let's get, let's get a few people together yeah. to study and see what God can do. Yeah. It's like it's hard to... to Quantify. quantify what God can do in these little pockets yes. of people getting together. Yeah. We'd pray every time. We would ask, what's God doing in your life? I was going to ask, what was transformative for her? Yeah, I think, I think it was the idea of really, what we try to do in that is me not answer any questions. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes, It's not an advice session. Yes, it yeah. was, what is God speaking to you? Mm. And then we're going to gather around you in this little group on Zoom and, and just hold you accountable to like, are you going to do what you're hearing God say? Yeah. And how can we help you and be praying for you in that? Yeah. I think it was just flipping the script a little bit. Yeah. Changing and the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Let me tell a story and then you tell your second okay. story. Because I want to end with your second story. Okay. My story is about the blessing box. Mm. At the beginning of the pandemic, once again, we didn't know it was going to happen. We <laughs> partnered up with the blessing boxes of Caparis County. Okay. And we put a blessing box on our campus here so that we could be a blessing to our neighbors that may not know where dinner is coming from. And they can mm. come here uh, very anonymously and grab a meal for their family. Um, we built that, and we opened it after the pandemic, like March. It was March oh, really? 20th. Yes. And uh, over this past year, we've watched that blessing box bless so many families. Yeah. And then this fall, Crystal Allen said, I would like to head up the blessing box. And she has taken this thing to another level. Mm. And in a couple ways, she has gotten the next generation involved. Scarlett Zimmerman, my kids, the Johnson kids, coming and filling the blessing box, yeah. spending their own money to put groceries oh, in the blessing box. Wow. And so Crystal is bringing the next generation along and teaching them how to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Yeah. Um, also, we partner with other churches so this isn't about just little C church. This isn't just about one life church. It's about the big C church yeah. of Concord being a blessing to our neighbors. And so I have been so proud of our church, so proud of our community, so proud of Central Drive as we have blessed families. We, we recently got a, a note in the blessing box here at One Life telling us that a family didn't know where their next meal was coming from. They stopped here, grabbed a meal, and they left a note just saying, this, this means so much. So you are making a difference. Wow. The blessing box is making a difference. It's our church being a light in the world. And so that's just a great story of how God that's has been awesome. on, on the move this past year. What's your story? Well, my story came from the Van Gilders. Um, uh, I think, I don't know when it was, maybe March, April, May, somewhere in there, Aaron found out he had to have a really quick surgery yes. to get something removed. And um, so 
I guess just doing what the culture of one life has been, if we hear about somebody, we don't always hear about it, but if we hear about somebody having surgery, having a baby, there's this thing called the meal train. Yes. So we like jumped into action. We just rounded some people up and said, hey, we've, they need some stuff. Kelly was like, no, don't give us food. Do not send us gift cards. You know. <laughs> but our church does what our church but does. It's just like we can't <laughs> help it, you know? Yes. And so she even, I was talking to her earlier, she said, um, people just brought a crazy amount of food and gift cards. I mean, they would show up from Popeye's, they'd show up from Panera, they'd, we were getting gift cards. We did, you know, I don't even know that she felt like they needed it. Yeah. I mean, it really helped out, honestly. Yeah. So one of her boys, some food showed up. One of her boys said... She's um, got two boys. Yeah, they've got two boys. Two little guys. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the little guys were like, um, who, where'd, this food, where'd this food come from? And she was like, oh, this came from, from, from our church. And he was like, so this is the church's food? And she was like, well, no, it's not the church's food, but the people of our church, you know, brought us food or whatever. And he was like, oh, so the church is like God. Dude. That's I mean, it. that's insane. That's it. That's like the moment when like, I mean, I've always thought this, that kids somehow have a different kind of faith. Yes. They can see through. Yes how God is working where sometimes I've grown a little jaded to it. They can see another reality. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. The church is like God. That's amazing. So I hope those stories <laughs> put flesh to all the analytics. Mm -hmm. And there are more stories. If you want to hear more stories, reach out to us. We'll tell you more stories. <laughs> we love telling stories. If you have questions, reach out to us. Send us an email. We'd love to respond to your questions and continue the conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Thanks good. for hanging out and doing this virtual town hall. And, uh, man, God is on the move, and we love our church, and there is so much more to come. Thank you for being here. Grace and peace, friends.